The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of WTJX, its board, staff, or underwriters. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you for tuning in to our first episode of the 2023 season. I'm Adrienne williams Octolin, Director of the Virgin Islands Office of Disaster Recovery, and you're watching Recovery in Focus. I'll be your host as we take closer look at the territory's most critical recovery sector, hospitals. What's the plan for transition to JFL North? When will JFL be demolished? What are the plans for the reconstruction of all the territory's hospitals? Guess what? We'll hear all this and much more from the leaders of the Wang F. Louis Hospital on St. Croix, Schneider Regional Medical Center on St. Thomas, and Myra Keating Smith Community Health Center on St. John. But first, let's get the latest news about other ongoing recovery projects around the territory. From the WTJX studio on St. Croix, I'm Artra Watlington Francis. The long-awaited repairs to the lights on the Melvin Evans Highway is underway as the repaving of the western segment is nearing completion. Department of Public Works Commissioner Derek Gabriel gives us the details. For the month of March and going into April, we will be focused on wrapping up our drainage improvements. Of course, that includes our paved waterways along the highway, as well as our culvert um, rehabilitation and um, construction. So that will allow for water not to settle on the highway, so of course our pavement can last longer. We'll also be focused on finishing um, our pavement along the highway. So that um, includes paving multiple sections from Williams Delight to Good Hope in both the eastbound and westbound lanes. Um, so we'll be finishing up our final course. Of course, we'll be doing our striping so that we can make sure our highway is safe for our, um, for our motoring public. And finally, residents of St. Croix, I am pleased to tell you that we will also be um, continuing with our installation of new street light poles. So I know a lot of you have been asking um, when will the highway be lit up? So this is what we're, this is um, our current uh, way of working on lighting up the highway. We'll be installing new poles, doing rehabilitation to the existing ones. We just need to put on new light heads. And of course, we will be energizing our street lights. So in the, in the month of April, hopefully you'll be seeing street lights on on the Melvin Evans Highway. Brighter days and of course nights ahead for the people of St. Croix. Repairs along the highway also continue in the Clifton Hill area. That project will widen the roadway, allowing for the addition of dedicated right turn lanes to ease congestion. This project is on track to be complete before the end of summer 2023. Restoration at the territory's parks continues with ongoing construction at the Joseph Aubain and Emil Griffith parks as well as the start of construction at the current Terrace Ballpark on St. Thomas. Sports Park and Recreations Commissioner Calvert White is on site at current Terrace with more. As you can see directly behind of me, the fence work has already started to go up. One of the major scopes of this project, which will be to replace the perimeter fencing around the facility. As you look above, we are going to be changing all of these light poles where we are going to be installing the LED lights, one of the stakeholders that we're going to be doing at all of our facilities. Some extra work that we're going to be doing, minor work at the restroom facilities, and also some roofing works under the bleachers. This facility lost its scoreboard and sign. Those two will be replaced where you will see a brand new sign displaying the name Corin Terrace Ball Field. I look forward to the completion of this project as we get it finished and completed to return to the community. Caribbean Contracting Services is expected to complete the $641,000 project before the end of summer 2023. Construction is underway to build the first new school in decades on St. Croix, the Arthur Richards Pre-K-28 School. The Virgin Islands Department of Education held a groundbreaking ceremony in February 2023. 
signaling the start of work at the former Evelyn Williams Elementary School site. Governor Bryan, Commissioner Wells Hedrington, Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett, Senators and other government officials came out to view the turning of the dirt and commemorate the start of the long-awaited project. ODR Director Adrian L. Williams Octolin spoke on the recent project approvals for the territory schools. I want to thank Congress for the opportunity provided through the Bipartisan Budget Act that allows us to rebuild to industry standard. I also want to share with you that this is just the beginning. There is a number of partners that have come together to get us to this point where this will not only happen on this school, but it would also happen on a number of other schools. We have gotten a decision from FEMA to rebuild seven schools. One of them that I'm really proud about is the Claude O'Marco School in Frederickstead. Full replacement. The full replacement of those schools mean that every one of our schools will be to a standard that any one of us will be happy to send our children to. BIDE Commissioner Dr. Dion Wells Hedrington shared with attendees plans for new school construction. Our schools are over 40 years old and all research says that the life cycle of a school is 40 years. So when we build today, we have to build with the understanding that these sites are going to be around for quite some time. So we want to make sure that in our designs, we include everything that our students will need. At VIDE, we are transforming today's learners into tomorrow's leaders. This transformation involves us improving our learning spaces to more conducive spaces for which children can do inquiry based learning, exploratory le learning, and many more activities inside and out. Governor Albert Bryan Jr. also gave comments. We have so much to do. So today as we dig this earth, let's dig that shovel and make a solid promise to ourselves that we are going to be part of the team that moves this place forward. Contractor MCM Build is expected to complete construction in 2025. In September 2022, the Department of Health broke ground on a $3.7 million project to rebuild the WIC building at Nude Hansen on St. Thomas. Now, the department is ready to start repairs for a new state-of-the-art WIC facility on St. Croix. Commissioner Usta Encarnacion tells us more about the $714,000 project in the heart of Frederickstead. So we're focusing on specific areas. We're focusing on expansion uh, and of, of the demonstration kitchen, which is something that everybody's eager to see how that comes out. We're also looking at, um, looking at the, air, the air duct, the system, and, and having a completely new system put in place, new central air conditioning system open concept, that's the big thing now in the design, looking at an open concept, but we're doing it so that we have office space that are, that are more open, more modern. We're looking at highlighting different colors so that when children come in, they're more excited. When parents come in, not just mothers, but mothers and fathers come in, they're more comfortable with the environment that we're working with as well. We're looking at the uh, LED lighting so that we're look, it's, it's more of an efficient way of processing our lighting of, of, um, of conserving energy. Heights Construction is expected to complete repairs before the end of the third quarter of 2023. The Office of Disaster Recovery has released its annual progress report, outlining the evolution of five years of recovery efforts from the devastating hurricanes of 2017. The report highlights the advancements of policy, the development of stakeholder partnerships, and the progression of projects. Readers will find a comprehensive examination of the territory's successes from a five-year perspective, a look at the challenges ahead and projections for the future. You can view the 2022 report and previous years electronically at www.usbiodr.com. Business owners, contractors, and consultants interested in doing business with the recovery should visit the ODR website for an updated list of open bid announcements and detailed information. This month, 
the Department of Public Works is requesting proposals from qualified and licensed contractors for their Christiansted road repair project. And the Virgin Islands Department of Education is seeking qualified respondents for its design bill solicitation for the St. Croix Central High School and Charlotte Amali High School and Bertha C. Bushelty Middle School on St. Thomas. For more information on this and other open bid announcements, as well as up-to-date news on all disaster recovery projects in the territory, log on to www.usviodr.com. Thank you for that update, Artra. Joining me on the set is Mr. Doug Cook, CEO of the Governor Juan Francisco Louis Hospital, and Mr. Darrell Smiles, Executive Director of the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team. And we also took the time to speak with Tina Comision, CEO of the Schneider Regional Medical Center, who will share with us her vision and the status of the hospitals in the St. Thomas, St. John District. Gentlemen, welcome to Recovery in Focus. Thank, Thank you. you. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both with us because I think you're on the tips of the tongue of everyone here, <laughs> especially on St. Croix. And a special welcome to you, uh, uh, CEO Cook, who has joined us and taken on this audacious but exciting challenge of rebuilding the hospitals on St. Croix along with other things. So tell me, what brought you to St. Croix? Yeah, thank you, and it is definitely an audacious goal. Uh, we have a lot to accomplish, and we have a great team that's moving on to make that possible. Um, uh, what brought me to St. Croix? I got a call from a recruiter. So um, I, I had my career mostly in Wisconsin and the upper Midwest, mm -hmm. uh, South Dakota. Uh, I started out my career as an x-ray technologist originally, um, did that for a number of years, and loved medicine. I actually grew up on a family farm, mm. uh, but uh, didn't want to be a farmer, so I went into healthcare. Um, after radiology school, I loved it. I went to nursing school, became a trauma nurse, uh, did that for a number of years before I kind of got guided into leadership. Uh, and again, working for all kinds of hospitals, for-profit, uh, tertiary medical centers, et cetera, rural, rural health care. Uh, but then got a call from a recruiter to come to St. Croix. So happy to be here uh, working with some great people and looking forward to working on these projects. Wow, I know you got baptized by fire because we've been working on getting this temporary facility because, you know, you really came in to work on a, a hospital structure that was not in the best health physically or financially or some of the other challenges that I know that you're pretty much well aware of. Yeah, you know, across the country, you know, rural health care uh, is struggling, right? And the, and the islands are no different. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at payer mix, when we look at the cost of, of uh, personnel and what it takes to get supply chain issues on island is a major issue that we need to address. So while we have plenty of challenges working just day-to-day -day operations, it's no different than any other hospital across the country. Just the problems are more exemplified. Well, you know, I don't know if I'm comforted comforted by that, that there's other people feeling our pain, but I am comforted with the fact that you don't seem afraid to take on the challenge. You're taking it on head on. Well, thank you. I, I have, a, like, I, I give all the credit to my team. I'm working with great people like Mr. Smalls and his team um, and ODR and all the, you know, our board has been nothing but supportive. So we have the right um, assets in place we just need to now um, make sure that we move things forward and that uh, we get into this temporary hospital because it's it it's been too long absolutely well speaking of people who are not afraid <laughs> Mr. Smiles, you are heading up the territorial redevelopment team how did that concept come come to being yes uh, thank you again uh, when after the hurricanes uh, we look at it as an opportunity for the territory moving forward how could we reconstruct or construct new facilities in unison across the territory. So we looked at developing uh, what's called now the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team so we could standardize across the territory, meaning our systems will be identical from our elevators, our mechanical systems, many of our medical systems within the facility, and that's a great opportunity. Uh, we'll be able to share resources across the territory, talent across the resources, and at the end of the day, it'll be in the best interest of the territory. Sure, so that means that if you're missing a screw in JFL, you could get that same screw from Mara Keating or from Schneider or for Charlotte Kimmerman 
and be able to share resources across the hospital. Absolutely. The way how hospital designs, facility designs are, it, it works well for standardization. Ab excellent. Well, you know, let's jump right in. There's an 800 pound elephant in the room. You know, recently we held a ribbon cutting for the DFL North on St. Croix. And, you know, we know that you're working towards moving in because it's not only about the ribbon cutting, it's actually being able to transfer patients. So, you know, how is that coming along? Um, recently we received notification that the move in, the projected move in date for patients will be delayed. So, what went into that decision, you know, and how is the team, the leadership team, working to make sure that that happens? Yeah, thank you. Great question. Um, which is on everyone's mind, right? So we had a, rib a wonderful ribbon cutting a few weeks ago. And, you know, we do that. We do the open house so that the community who's been waiting to for JFL North to open gets an opportunity to see it. Now, we don't want every uh, person in the community to come out and be an ER patient or, or be a patient in JFL North. So we want to give them the opportunity ahead of time to see what JFL North is. And it is truly a tremendous uh, building. Uh, when you drive by it, it doesn't look like much when you just see the end of the trailer, but the interconnectivity between them um, really lays out what is a beautiful facility uh, for a temporary structure. Now, we have had challenges, and uh, we, we know that we want to make sure that the patient safety is of utmost importance. Um, and we've said that throughout the beginning, and we have the support of our entire team, our medical staff, the board, that we are not going to move into JFL North until we can be assured that patient safety is not compromised. Uh, with every move in, um, I've opened plenty of hospitals in my career, mm -hmm. and there are always challenges. There are always things that come up at the last minute uh, because you want to wait and do your final testing before you move in. And um, since we are in that phase of that final testing and move in, we've had multiple issues come up that um, we need to pause and take the appropriate steps to make sure that we can ensure that those systems are working correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, those systems include, uh, we're having an issue with our CT scanner. It's a software issue with licensing. Um, so we are working through that with the vendor. Uh, we have an issue with a electronic or uh, electric transformer that has not operated the way it's supposed to and we are replacing that. Um, and we had two other issues, one being a nurse call system and our fire alarm system. Again, both installed but not operating to the way and the specifications um, that it's laid out to. So we're taking a step back, looking at those, making sure that we bring in the right people to ensure that we are moving forward um, in unison. Good. So, you know, we, we know that you're, you've encountered some challenges, but I think where we're going to is much better than where we're coming from. So what are some of the, the features, the amount of rooms you have, and some of the up-to-date technological advances that we have in JFL North? Ab absolutely. Uh, in, the, in terms of radiology, uh, the CT that uh, CEO Cook mentioned is 128 slice CT. Uh, the one and only one in the territory. Uh, once we get that software upgrade, we'll be ready to perform all CTs for patients that come in. Uh, we have all state-of-the-art, uh, uh, what we call life support systems, mm -hmm. our monitoring system, our space lab systems, where we could centrally monitor all the patients within the facility. Uh, in our mother baby, our pediatrics unit, we have what's called giraffes. Again, what the one and only ones in the territory. We have four of these uh, for any uh, neonatal care that comes in the facility. Uh, you name it, everything mm -hmm. that's in JFL North is state of the art and we wanna make sure that everything is operating to the, to the optimal uh, conditions as well as to making sure that all our staff are trained, proficient, and being able to take care of our patients. Yeah. And again, our emphasis is patient safety, patient safety, patient, patient safety. safety. So what is this transition? I know if you're moving from one house to the next house, it takes a while, you have to pack up, um, you got to make sure that you wrap your glasses and just just move it from one house to house. I can't even imagine what it will take to move a hospital into another building. So what has gone into planning for that transition? Well, a lot of coordination is number one. And we can't thank our teams enough for all the work that they're doing in coordinating that care. So think about, you talked about wrapping glasses, et cetera, but you always have to leave a glass available, right, mm -hmm. to have water with. We have to think about, we have to run, for, for during that transition, two emergency rooms. 
we have to ensure that we have operating rooms available during this transition phase. So as we start to move equipment out of JFL Maine to JFL North, we need to ensure that we have the appropriate equipment still operating and running in JFL Maine um, to take care of the, the community of St. Croix. So a lot of coordination going into this, working with outside vendors. Uh, when we move equipment, a lot of our equipment is very sensitive, right? You, we need to uh, make sure that it's calibrated correctly. And some of that calibration, some of that work can only be done by the vendor. Um, so we are coordinating with outside vendors to come in um, to be a part of this move. Uh, we also have to take care of our patients while they're uh, an inpatient. So moving them from one facility to another facility um, requires an ambulance ride, right? We want to make sure that they get there safely. So m a lot of coordination going on uh, with multiple agencies, multiple companies, um, and again, our entire JFL team. So I, I understand that this transition, although you're moving some of the equipment beforehand, the actual patient transfer will happen in a day. Like, so you won't be straddling for too long. What that does that look like and what does the public have to expect? So right now, what we anticipate at 7 a.m., uh, as CEO Cook mentioned, we're gonna have two emergency rooms operable. Mm -hmm. So basically at 6.59 a.m., the last ambulance will um, come to JFL. At 7 a.m., that first ambulance will then go to JFL North. Once we open up our emergency room, mm -hmm. then we will start to tra um, transfer all of our most critical patients into the facility and our less um, acute patients will then transfer thereafter. Uh, much of that, a, a lot of the equipment is already transitioned up into JFL North, uh, but we have to make sure that we have systems operable in both, both sites until we actually move the patients. So would all the patients move over or would you keep some in, like those who are about to be discharged, will you keep some of them in the in JFL, the regular JFL, or would you move all the patients and empty out um, JFL? Yeah. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> uh, it is our goal, you know, because we have to have the staff, right, to be able to support uh, those facilities and those hospitals um, in both two different areas. So to make sure that we have the appropriate amount of staff, our goal, our plan is to move all patients mm -hmm. within one day. Okay. And um, as uh, Daryl mentioned, that process will begin in the morning um, and we will transition those patients on a schedule. But it is our goal to move them all. Um, so that we're in one house and we are all together um, and be able to take care of them. Okay, well, you know, it sounds like, again, it's a lot of opportunity and you have pretty much stopped to calibrate and make sure that everything's perfect for the move. So what are we projecting now? And originally it was the end of March. Where are we now based on the new occurrences that you've encountered? Yeah, with, with the occurrences that we just mentioned a few minutes ago, we are actively working to clear those off and working with the vendors to make sure that uh, they're, we're retesting and we're ready to go. We are looking, we're projecting the end of April. Uh, we, we've actually set a date for April 22nd to, to make that transition happen. So again, m many things um, still work to be done, uh, but we are projecting that we can hit that date. And um, if, if we... Um, decide we need to make a change at the last minute, we will absolutely do that, but only for patient safety reasons. There is no um, work, no stone that's not being turned uh, to ensure that we can make this date happen, uh, but we always put patient safety first. Okay, well, we wish you the best of luck, with us the best of luck, because of course we really depend on your success. But before we shift to JFL Permanent and update our viewers on the permanent facility, Let's take a moment to hear from a couple of our new residents to the territory who ask the questions or concerns do you have for the leadership of JFL? And this is what they had to say. Okay, so at first I wanna preface this that we're fairly new to the island and we moved here in November. But what we do know is that there was a large sum of money received to uh, build a new hospital, a very nice state-of-the-art facility. And um, once that eventually does get built, what my question is, there's gonna be a lot of money um, that has to be put into maintaining the hospital to keep it going and keep it strong and to keep it from going downhill. And what is the plan to keep the funds um, coming in and to maintain the hospital to keep that from happening? Um, so we're specifically in the uh, prosthetic industry. Um, 
the thing we've seen the most is just the need for um, an integrated ecosystem of specifically after an amputation from what we've experienced, um, but having those, those patients after they get amputated, uh, having them put right into the healthcare system and rehab system right away, uh, and just kind of the, the collaboration between groups uh, and, and making sure that they're taken care of and no one falls through the cracks. Well, gentlemen, you just heard a question of the public regarding maintenance and also specific, you know, what's, who would have thought that we'd run into some of the specific medical question for you. Um, so let's, let's tackle that piece by piece, maintenance. What's the plan for maintenance of these new facilities? Well, coming uh, from my background as uh, VP of facilities for our hospitals, uh, making sure that we have a preventive maintenance program implemented from the day we open our facilities, making sure that we have spare parts uh, available, making sure we have vendors lined up for all of our service agreements. And of course, the funding is key to that. And the funding w will come with the new hospital facilities. Well, uh, well, I'll let Doug explain that piece <laughs> in terms of, of how the finances go. Yeah, so you know, financing in healthcare is tricky, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's multiple sources, there's different things that we have to take care of, uh, but we rely, you know, the hospital relies on partially creating its own revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do get allotment from the, the VI government, which we are very appreciative of uh, on an annual basis, but you know, a large part of our revenue and funding comes from the business that we have. So what we have to do as a hospital is continue to work to uh, find opportunities to provide more business uh, to the community of St. Croix and in the, thus our funding coming back. Okay, but I'm sure with all of the state-of-the-art equipment that you won't have a lot of trouble finding new business. Um, we also heard about some of the other technical opportunities that we have with prosthetics is one of the questions they ask you know what's your response to, to that man well first screen? what's some um, educated consumers mm -hmm. uh, well, great to hear I mean they, they're very well versed in in health care and and that's um, wonderful to see uh, because what we know and specifically to the his question about prosthetics is uh, this is not something that JFL can do on its own mm -hmm. uh, we are a health care system Right, and we there are a lot of different people that make up a healthcare system, um, and as a consumer, you start that in preventative care, whether that be with a primary care physician mm -hmm. or or taking wellness, taking care of your own body and health. Uh, that is the beginning step. If you're if you need emergent or urgent care, there's those services available, and then we provide the inpatient care. Uh, once we have surgery, once that inpatient stay is done, we then need to move into what we call post-acute care. And that can be handled in a variety of different ways. Uh, one of the ways is by home health services mm -hmm. and other integrated services. With pharmacies are a big part of you know, our integrated health care system for our community. And so it's working with uh, our local partners in those different um, agencies to make that happen for our consumers. Wonderful, okay, well you know, that's we're part of an overall system and it's that's not each institution by itself but an overall system. Well, we have discussed hospital projects on St. Croix District, so let's move over to St. Thomas to start our conversation. And we caught up with CEO of the Schneider Regional Medical Center, Tina Comision, who shared with her her vision for hospital facilities. <laughs> My vision is for Schneider Regional Medical Center to be a trusted provider of high quality health care to the residents and visitors of the Virgin Islands. My team and I are very focused on ensuring we provide access to critical health care services for Virgin Islanders, on maintaining the highest levels of quality for the services we do provide, and on improving the overall patient experience. Our vision for the future of healthcare in the Virgin Islands includes new state-of-the-art healthcare facilities on both St. Thomas and St. John that are outfitted with the latest medical equipment and technology. On St. Thomas, our Royal Sir Schneider Hospital is gonna be rebuilt to accommodate our very busy emergency department, labor and delivery services, general orthopedic and other specialty surgery services, cardiology and pulmonology services, and a wide range of outpatient services, including lab, radiology, and physical therapy. In the meantime, until that construction begins, we will continue to make temporary repairs to our current hospital, 
so that we can provide the best possible care and environment for our patients. Even before getting our new facility, which will be several years away, we are pushing forward with our vision for expanding access to critical services by reintroducing interventional cardiology, gastroenterology, and other service lines. We are also working hard to improve the throughput and wait times in our emergency department in our existing facility. Even with the damage sustained to our facilities, when our health system was surveyed for reaccreditation by the Joint Commission this year, we did exceptionally well at demonstrating that we give safe care that is as good or better than the care or service you would receive anywhere on the mainland. Our team includes highly skilled, US trained, board certified doctors, nurses, and technicians who care about our patients and about delivering the best possible care to our community. We want to encourage Virgin Islanders to get their care at home at Schneider Regional Medical Center. We have a great hospital and a great center, a very, very talented team working together to improve our hospital and united with a singular focus, the patient and doing what's best for the patient. I thank our SRMC staff for the wonderful work they do for our community every day, 365 days a year. Well, you have heard it. That's the vision for the healthcare facilities on St. Thomas, St. John, really. Um, I heard the CEO encouraging people to get their health care needs here in the territory. So, I, Mr. Smalls, you're, you're the man to make sure that the <laughs> facilities stay intact. And I know you did, a, you did a lot of work after the storms to make sure that we can continue to provide services through um, at the Roy Lester Schneider Hospital. But you're still working on getting, we've got a replacement for um, the hospital on St. Thomas, so, so where are we? What is your team doing to facilitate um, from the replacement all the way to construction? Well, as you said, the Schneider Regional Medical Center is comprised of not only the Royal Schneider Hospital, but the Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Institute, as well as the Mary Keating Smith Community Health Center on St. John. To date, we have received the fixed cost offer for the Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Center, uh, of which we have just completed the demolition phase, and we will soon begin with the construction phase. And once that uh, contract is awarded, we are looking at 12 months beyond after that for the completion of that work effort. Yeah. So we're gonna talk a lot about the Charlotte Kimmerman because I know you have hammers swinging over there. Um, but you know, a lot of people wanna know about Roy, Sh Roy Lester Schneider, you know, what's going on there? I think that was the last facility to actually get a replacement. Um, what, what went into that discussion with FEMA and, and where are you at with that process right now? Uh, well, the good thing is that we've completed the process and we were successful in getting a replacement. It took a long, uh, arduous uh, task to mm -hmm. working back and forth with FEMA, but we all finally came together and had a consensus that the Roy L. Schneider Hospital will be a complete replacement. The challenge now is once we continue to work with, uh, with FEMA to arrive at the fixed cost offer, we will then begin the design phase for the new facility. And one thing that we're looking at is looking at the entire campus and seeing how we might be able to construct a new hospital on the campus, then transition into that new facility and then demolish the existing structure at the end of, of that phase of work. Yes, it's a challenge, um, but we are excited about that. We're excited about that opportunity, just as we are excited about all the hospitals across the territory. So, you know, you're talking about demolishing um, and sometimes people ask, well, does that mean you're gonna raise the entire building? Um, what is what is some of the plans for providing healthcare at the same time while you're reconstructing? I'm gonna ask the same thing on, on, on the St. Croix side because that is a challenge. You will be on active construction sites with these hospitals. Absolutely, so as we said, the first thing is we, we have to construct a mechanical building and then we'll start to construct the facility. You talk about how do we do the demolition. Uh, there's no wrecking balls that will come through. You know, we send crews in, they do the demolition in, on the interior, and then we start to skin it back to just the slab and, and the framing of the building, after which then we could then take it down floor by floor. Mm -hmm. uh, during that process though, we would have completed the new hospital, moved all our patients, become 100% operational in the new hospital, and then begin that demolition phase. Can it be done? Absolutely, and we're excited and looking forward, working with our architects to be able to achieve this, uh, this feat. 
Okay. Well, you sound like you got a plan. It's important to have a plan. And I know you started talking about Charlotte Kimmerman and, you know, cancer patients in the territory haven't had access to oncology care at CKCI since Herman Maria damaged the facility. So in June 2022, FEMA obligated $50 million for the replacement of the Charlotte Kimmerman Cancer Institute. And we know we have access to the funds to move forward. It's, it's a really, really critical project. And we asked Commissioner, Commis, CEO Commission, I got my tongue all tied up, and she had some very, very key things she wanted to say about that project and how important it was to the people of the Virgin Islands. Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Institute is a most valuable asset, not only to the people of the St. Thomas St. John District, but to the entire Virgin Islands and even to the Eastern Caribbean region. CKCI provided access within the territory to life-saving cancer treatment, including radiation oncology. We are working as fast as we can to get CKCI back open so that our residents are no longer required to travel long distances to get to care and to be separated from their family to obtain cancer treatment. As CEO for Schneider Regional Medical Center, I look forward to us having CKCI back online so that we can resume providing these important services and so our patients can return to receiving care in comfortable and familiar surroundings. We have prioritized CKCI as our first project as we understand how important it is to get radiation oncology services back available within the territory. We are working with the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team on the redesign of that facility and on the programming for the hospital and cancer center of the future. We have already engaged an architectural and engineering firm, and we've already substantially completed the interior demolition for this institute. We have drafted amazing plans for the rebuilding of a state-of-the-art Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Institute. Though the doors may be physically closed, we still do offer a number of services that were previously offered at CKCI to the community. We have worked in partnership with the medical oncologists in our community to keep chemotherapy available on island, and we really thank them for stepping up to fill an important gap. And we have continued to provide infusion therapy and compression garment and specialty garment fitting services at Royal Esther Schneider Hospital. All of us at SRMC are very excited to resume these very important cancer care services for the people of the Virgin Islands. Well, we see that you are working to make sure that things happen and continue to happen. And, you know, I'm glad that we're able to show that you've received 50, obligation of $50 million, but you already started working. So we've heard that the demolition is pretty much completed mm -hmm. and the selected demolition because you didn't knock the whole building down. Yeah, that's correct. And yeah. now, when are we going to get construction going? Well, right now, uh, we're looking at advertising uh, for bid in the month of April. Uh, we hope to select a contractor by May and hopefully by June of this summer, 2023, we will begin the reconstruction of the Charlotte Kimmelman Cancer Institute. I'm sure my team is listening to you say hopefully, and you know, what? why are you hoping or how How confident that you can stay, are you that you can stay on that track for that? I, I'm schedule. pretty confident, and, and the reason I say hopeful, uh, one of the things that across the territory, uh, you know, we're part of the recovery leader team, uh, we're facing with contractors, the availability of contractors and, and the workforce that we will need for rebuilding across this entire territory, not just the hospitals, our schools, our infrastructure, and that's why we continue to meet on a regular basis to make sure that we have the right resources available in the territory, as well as those that will have to come from abroad. Oh, let's let's bet some cookies that <laughs> you're not going to have any problems getting contractors. To, I suspect there are a lot of contractors waiting for the healthcare facilities and being able to to bid on those. So, if that's what you're hoping on, then you know you want to take the bet. The bet is on. Bet's gone. <laughs> not a problem. But you know we're wishing you all the best, though, because of course your success means the success for the people of the Virgin Islands and keeping that project on track is extremely important so we salute you for where you are right now and we send you best wishes for you to keep this project moving not only for the cancer patients um, but just overall for the healthcare system for the territory well you know we couldn't close the show out though without talking about Mary Keating on St. John and CEO Commission talk to us about what that facility 
means as well to the Schneider Regional Medical Center community. On St. John, our Myra Keating Smith Community Health Center was significantly damaged during the hurricanes and we had to relocate our services to a temporary structure. We have maintained providing not only 24-7 emergency care, but also a wide range of important primary health care services and wellness services. We want to expand the specialty services that are available at Myra Keating Smith, but we are currently limited with space as we are operating out of a temporary structure. When we build the new Myra Keating Smith Community Health Center facility, we will be able to offer additional specialty services at the clinic, so St. Jonians won't have to travel as much to St. Thomas to access those providers. We look forward to beginning to work with the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team on developing the new permanent structure for Myra Keating Smith in the early part of 2024. In the interim, we continue to look for creative ways to increase access for persons on St. John, and we're currently investing in technology for telemedicine to connect our patients and providers at Myra Keating Smith with our providers at Royal Tush Schneider Hospital and to specialists in the states to reduce the requirements for patients to travel. All right, so St. John will not be denied. I know we've been working on getting the cost agreed upon with FEMA and design should be started. So where are you exactly now and how are you? Yes, uh, we just got the good news with FEMA. Uh, I actually signed off on the uh, acceptance of what we're projecting will be awarded for um, Myra Keating Smith. Once that final award is presented, we were gonna move post haste on the developing the plans and specifications. I've already been in contact with the architect of record uh, to get the, the ball rolling. So we're all excited and ready and raring to move forward with the Myra Keating Smith Community Health Center. How long will it take for uh, the construction of, of Myra Keating? Well, right now we're looking at about an 18 to 24 month uh, cycle for Myra Keating Smith. As we know, uh, much of the workforce as well as all of the building products will have to come be shipped into the island of St. John. Uh, first, we're going to start with the demolition of the existing structure. And then, of course, we're going to build a brand new state-of-the-art facility there on the island of St. John. So are we looking at selective demolition again? Are we, are we going to get a wrecking ball? Uh, uh, no, St. John, no, St. No John. No wrecking ball. No wrecking ball, but yes, St. John will be demolished. Um, there has been some inherent challenges with the foundation, and as such, this is a great opportunity, and again, I, I, I have to emphasize the Territorial Hospital Redevelopment Team. We look forward to integrating all of our facilities, uh, making sure that, uh, as, as I think we heard earlier, the Department of Education Commissioner about uh, schools, 40 years, hospitals, we look at at least 50 years with uh, maintenance. Right, well, we're, we're building state-of-the-art facilities that's up to industry standards. Wrecking Wall and St. John St. Croix? Uh, again, it's a, a selective. We'll go in and demolish from the interior, we'll and then we'll begin with the um, taking the building down floor by floor. Taking the building down floor by floor. How do you feel when you hear that? Are you excited? Well, um, put my personal comments aside. But <laughs> I, I think there's people in the community that would like to use dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> right? Take uh, it all and, down. And maybe start with the ER bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we are, you know, obviously we are very excited, you know, for this process to begin. Um, again, as we as exciting times as we talked earlier, uh, to move to JFL North, mm -hmm. uh, temporary facility to see the uh, former JFL Main come down, and then you know we're on a small we're on one campus, so and it's a tight campus. So then to see the rising of a brand new replacement hospital for the future is going to be an incredible experience and time to go, go through. Yes, and I know that we've learned some very hard lessons on JFL North. You, you were not a part of the initial part of the construction of this facility, but you've had to come in and try to fix a lot that has been going on with it. Um, and we're at this point, so I say that to say this, we don't expect that um, we'll have the same problems. We probably will have problems, but not the same ones. Absolutely. We, d we don't foresee that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've already engaged all three architects of record uh, who are responsible for the Myra Keating Smith, as well as Schneider Regional Medical Center, as well as the JFL um, Juan F. Louis Hospital here, here on St. Croix. And we're working collaboratively 
going, looking at lessons learned. What works? What are the best? What is going to be the, the best implementation of facilities, building materials, and making sure that, yes, not only are we building state of the art facilities, but they're resilient and being able to withstand Category 5 hurricanes and greater. So, you know, you talk about the equipment that's in the facility, and I think that's some of the most, from the outside, you can't tell that there's such. Um, you talk about the CT scan. I remember years ago when someone explained to me what these what slices meant and like uh, what do you, you know how important are having the most amount of slices and what does that actually mean for CT scanners and what does what's the role that plays in diagnosing illnesses? Yeah, great question, and we could spend a lot of time on it. I actually have an imaging background, so I'm. Um, a little bit familiar with uh, being able to explain it. Uh, when we talk about slices, we're actually talking about taking a picture basically, basically the horizontally through your body. And the current slice uh, scanner that we currently have is a 64 slice CT scanner. Now we move to 128. Mm -hmm. The industry, they moved to 256, they have 512s out, and they're moving on past that. What we're really talking about when we move and doubling the number of slices, what we have, we're really decreasing the time it takes to scan that portion of the body. Even though I know when you go into a CT scanner, you think you're laying very still, but your lungs are moving, your heart is pumping, your, your gastrointestinal system is moving, all of that creates motion. And as you use your iPhone, right, you, you know that you have to, it, you get a blurry picture. Same thing with a CT scanner. The faster we can take that picture and decrease that motion, the more clear of a picture that we can get for our radiologists and our specialists to interpret what's going on inside your body. Well, you know, the fact that we can still be competitive and have that level of equipment here in the Virgin Islands is very, very helpful to do just like what CEO Comision said, for people to get their health care here in the Virgin Island. Well, we also captured final comments from CEO Comision while visiting the hospital on St. Thomas, and here's what she had to say. Our facilities experienced extreme damage during Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Our facilities department team has done and continues to do an excellent job of performing temporary repairs and maintenance to our Royal Esther Schneider Hospital and Myra Keating Smith facilities. We have completed temporary repairs to our roof and to most of our patient care spaces so that we can continue to provide most of the services that we did pre-storm. Unfortunately, now we do have less space available to us for some of our patient care activities, and we see this especially in St. John with the Myra Keating Smith temporary structure. The combined effects of the storms and COVID also had significant impacts on our staffing, and we've lost a lot of our permanent nurses and some of our medical professionals. As we rebuild our facilities and reintroduce our services, we have to simultaneously focus on recruiting excellent nurses and technologists to join or rejoin our team. If you are a nurse or know a nurse, encourage them to join the SRMC team. We have improved our compensation package, we're now much more competitive and attractive, and we hope to be able to bring home some Virgin Islanders to work with us and help us take care of our own people. We have a very talented workforce at Schneider Regional. All of our caregivers are really on the front lines, providing excellent patient care, even in buildings affected by storm damage, and even through the rebuilds, and through COVID. Our employees are truly the core of our healthcare system. They work together every day towards our common goal of providing high quality healthcare services and creating the best patient care experience. Our doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, and entire staff are amazing, and I cannot thank them enough for the wonderful work they do for our community every day. Well, we have a lot of dedicated people in the healthcare industry, and um, two of which are sitting right here with me. And I really want to hear your, your last thoughts. Um, you know, anything that you think that we should really be able to hear from your perspective. Being at the top, um, we heard from CEO Comision, and you, Mr. Smalls, who's responsible for rebuilding all of the hospitals in the territory. What are your final thoughts? Well, I, 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 I 
I want to say I really look forward to this opportunity. Um, having been in the healthcare here in the territory since 1992 uh, and seeing that disconnect, but seeing how we will have the symmetry between all of our facilities, the standardization. Uh, I know we kind of been focusing on the medical equipment, but then you have the mechanical systems that keep our facilities go ongoing. So again, this is a great opportunity to build state-of-the-art, resilient uh, hospitals, healthcare facilities for our people across the entire Virgin Islands. Awesome, thank you. And you know we're wishing, we're rooting for you. Thank you. And CEO Cook recently came to the Virgin Islands to take on one of the hardest jobs there is. You know, how do you feel? What's your outlook for the next couple of years? Well, I think a common word that we've used throughout this, this section is uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it is a huge opportunity for the community, um, not only here um, in St. Croix, but for the entire Virgin Islands and all the projects uh, going on throughout the communities. Uh, what, you know, CEO Commission really did a great job of thanking our teams, right? We talk often daily about thanking the hardworking nurses, doctors, staff, technologists, etc., housekeepers, dietitians, everybody that goes into the healthcare system. Uh, we can't thank enough. And the, their dedication um, to the communities that they serve is, is overwhelming. And it's amazing and it's inspiring to watch. I would say in my closing comment, I want to thank the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, we hear, we hear stories, right? We hear comments, and, and, and rightfully so. But by large, there is an overwhelming support for the hospital in St. Croix, mm -hmm. and St. Thomas, and St. John. And we want to, I want to thank the community for their patience, their understanding, and their, for, their ongoing commitment to support our healthcare systems. Because without them, we don't exist, and we exist for them. So it is our goal, it is our mission, it is our vision to pro provide state-of-the-art care here um, in the Virgin Islands. Great, well it is a goal that we are very supportive of and we'll continue to ensure that we send light and love your way to get the job done. But before we close, I wanna continue to thank our viewers who reach out to us on social media and via our inbox during and after the show. We received an email from the mainland here, and here's what Martin Roden asked. I'm trying to reach out to see if there are any programs for homeowners undergoing Hurricane Maria home repairs on the coast. We are in the process of upgrading our home to be rated for 250 mile per hour winds, and weren't sure if some of the funds were allocated for this purpose or not. If so, I'm not exactly sure where to start, as our home sat destroyed for four years before we were able to get approvals to begin repairs. Thank you for reaching out to the Office of Disaster Recovery, Martin, but unfortunately the funds obligated to the USVI can only be used for projects within the territory. We understand your plight and as some residents are still awaiting repairs here as well, recovery from the devastating effects of natural disasters can take years. Whether you are here in the Virgin Islands or the continental US, for our local viewers, if you're in need of support to refurbish or build a home, please contact the Virgin Islands Economic Development Authority for more information on the VI Slice program or VI HFA for details on their first time home buyer programs. Remember, if you have a question about the recovery, you can message us on any of our social media platforms. Visit our website or email us at info at usvi.odr.com. Thank you both for an informative discussion, but we have run out of time because you know, time flies when you're having fun. But you can stay up to date by visiting us online at usvi.odr.com, or you can also keep this discussion going at facebook.com forward slash WTJX. Thank you for watching. We'll continue to build a legacy of resilience.